Hello everyone again. Uh, today we're going to be going over the line and circle intercept method, also known as the Hine and Hilliard method. So, or line and Hilliard method. So what we're going to be doing today is using image J, so we can open that up, on a sample of bulk aluminum that has been ground and polished and imaged in an SEM. So here's our image. Um, so the, a few things that we're going to be doing today is basically um, setting our scale and then doing the line intercept method. So again, first we have to set our scale. And if you guys you know forget how to do this, uh, watch my previous video on this channel. So here we go, we'll use a line tool. One end to the other. Analyze, set scale. So we can make this an even 400. This is five microns. And we're going to make this global. Uh, the reason that we're going to make this global is we're going to be Xing out and bringing back this particular image. Um, so we're going to do that. Click OK. So here's our image. So we already set our scale. And now basically what we're going to do is do um, the line intercept method. So basically what we're going to be doing is counting intercepts, tangents, and um, triple point intersections of a random line drawn on our image based on the ASTM standard E112. So what is an intercept, what is a triple point, and what is a, a tangent? So let's uh, zoom into one of these here. So this is a great example, and I'm just going to circle this, of a triple point. Okay, So this area right here where these three grains kind of meet, this area would be considered a triple point. Um, an intersection, if I have my line here and drew it like so, so this would be a triple point, this would be a triple point. This right here is an intersection, as well as if I extend this, this is also an intersection. Okay, so we've gone over briefly um, what a triple point and what an inner section is. Now a tangent, and I'm going to uh, slowly kind of move this so we can get a good tangent here. <laughs> so something like this where we have an intercept, an intercept, um, maybe an intercept, maybe a triple point, an intercept, and then we have this grain edge here just touching the line. That would be what I would consider a tangent, okay? So now that we know what we're kind of looking for, we need to um, basically set a line um, of a certain length. So to do that, we're going to use this fixed length line tool. Um, if this doesn't show up necessarily, um, we're going to click these double arrows here, go down to fixed length line tool, and that will bring it up here, okay? So we know that this is five microns, um, if we right click on this, this will give us a desired length. So let's make this um, something like 10 microns. Okay. So what this is going to do is no matter where I go, this is going to draw a line of exactly 10 microns based on the scale that we used. Okay. So we can have a line probably around there. That looks good. And again, remember that in the ASTM standard, these lines are supposed to be randomly placed over the um, over the image, so you can have a line here, a line here, a line here, a line here, etc. Okay. Um, what I've found in my experience, um, an easy way to do this is do two vertical lines, two horizontal lines, and then two diagonal. So what we're going to be doing is basically counting the number of times um, this line intersects um, a grain boundary or a triple point or um, a tangent. So let's draw a line somewhere like there. That looks good. Okay, so what we need to do first is we're going to basically use colors to do this. So in image J, um, we basically need to make sure that we can 
new colors in our image. So we can go to image and type and change the type to RGB color. Uh, where I'm going to be using different colors for intersections, um, triple points, and um, tangents. So there we have RGB color, and we can use this paintbrush tool. I'm just going to put a dot up here. There, we make sure it's working. It's red. Control Z to take it away. Okay, so now we know this line. What we can do is zoom in on it, and we can now start to count the intersections. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and that is a triple point, so I'm going to just put, um, we'll come back to that. There we go. Okay, so let's count up these points, and I'm just going to have a quick little uh, spreadsheet here. So we can call this uh, diagonal 2, for example. So... Um, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 23. So we have 23 intersections. And what this is basically doing is just a little bit of math, taking the intersections times 1, triple points times 2, and the tangents times 1 half and adding them up into a total. And of course we have our total line length and microns of 10. So that was just from uh, the line length tool here that we set in the beginning. Okay, so uh, we're gonna choose a different color here. Uh, cancel. So instead of doing red and all I did was just right click, let's do green. So now we're going to go back here and mark some of the uh, triple points. So there, so there I've marked the two triple points and it didn't look like we had any tangents. So let's do two triple points and zero tangents. So we have 27 um, equivalent total intercepts for this particular line. Okay, so now what we can do is, you know, we can draw another line and do the same analysis. And again, a few lines because we want decent statistics on this. Um, but you see these points don't go away, so the best thing to do is just close out of the image, don't save, and then just bring it back in. Um, we don't want to disable the global calibration. We want to keep that. And so here we have our image. And if we wanted to do a 10 micron line again, there it is. So basically that is uh, the whole essence of doing the intersections, triple points, and tangents, adding them up, and then using a few equations that are in um, the ASTM standard or the lab handout or whatever you're using to perform your calculations. Um, again, you know, this could be done also with a circle. So we can make a circle of known diameter, right? We can do control measure. And that should bring up um, the area. So we know the area of a circle. We can back calculate out the radius of the circle and use that to find the circumference. Or you can tell image J, uh, if you come over, And do this. You can see up in this area up here that you have an X and a value, a Y, and you can more or less figure out the diameter of the circle from there. I would use the area, it's a lot more precise. So this is uh, kind of the same 
same idea is that we start at a specific point that we're going we can mark so let's get our paintbrush back out with our brush options um you know let's do yellow because it fits our circle so we're going to start oh, let's do control z quick image type rgb color with yellow we can say okay we're going to start at this point and then go in with red again and start marking our intersections and such. So hopefully this was uh, instructive for you guys. Um, you know, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them in the comments. Thanks. We'll see you.